I'm just going to start off and say that I really like Persona 3 Reload. From the cleanest looking user interface in the game, to its timeless soundtrack and dark yet hopeful story, there is so much to love about the game. But if you clicked on this video, there is a chance that you already know how good Persona 3 is, which is why if you're one of the people who hasn't played this game yet, I can give it my highest recommendation to anyone. But reviewing Persona 3 Reload isn't what I want to do in today's video. Rather, I want to make a video talking about one of the more, well, melancholic elements of Persona 3 Reload, that being just the moment-to-moment -moment vibes in the game. Having played 90 hours of Persona 5 Royal, 24 hours of Persona 4 Golden before my laptop couldn't handle it anymore, and now, after tons of hours in Persona 3 Reload, I've realized that P3R is sticking a lot more with me than the other two Persona games that I've played. This is just my opinion, but I can see how some other players can relate to this game more than the others, since enjoyment is purely subjective. The reason why the vibes of P3R are sticking with me is because of how personal they end up feeling that they move you. I know what I'm saying might not make sense just yet, but let's just take a look at the social links and characters of the game. I'm not exactly quite sure how to describe it, but the side stories and expressions of the characters just feel a lot more real. Each Persona game shares a core theme of finding one's own purpose, which is found in the form of the persona that the characters unleash during combat, but the three Persona games all add or slightly change this core concept of it. Five's main theme revolves around rebelling against society and norms that are placed on you by others. Four's themes really leans heavily on self-acceptance and accepting the flaws that make you well, you. And finally in 3, its core theme of self-acceptance delves deeper into the idea of sacrifice, willing to take risks to live. I mean, it's plastered front and center in the combat of the game. When summoning personas, each game has its own way of summoning them. 5 lets you use a mask that represents the other self, 4 uses tarot cards, and 3, well, if you look on the screen right now, that's how they summon their personas. They take this evoker, raise it up, and trigger it. Although it's harmless in the end, the persona users in 3 have to take this risk to summon their personas. Does it evoke tough times or evoke a sense of death that caused them to unleash their inner selves? I really don't know, but the imagery here is clear in its message. Sacrifice to win. Or, if we look at the social links, it becomes sacrifice to understand. Life, just in general, has lots of lives and moments that overlap at different times, or never overlap at all, because of the directions their lives take them in. Take this video for example, although very surface level, your life of you, the viewer, is overlapping with my life by you watching this very video. Maybe it acts as a catalyst for something to happen in my life or in yours, but the point stands that lives you would never expect to ever cross paths can actually cross one another through ways you wouldn't imagine and lead to a greater impact. Just taking a look at the social links in Persona 3, from the track athlete Kazushi Miyamoto, your classmate Kenji Tomochika, or the team manager Yuko Nishiwaki, I'm not sure if I pronounced them correctly, but all these characters through your player character's life as an ordinary student brought you closer to these people and you get to see the sacrifices they are willing to take to live. An athlete fighting for a loved one, a desperate classmate who takes a risk of asking out his own teacher, to a manager taking on the role of training younger children. To varying degrees, these few characters that I just mentioned all sacrifice something valuable in their lives, be it their own physical well-being, pride, and time, all very real elements that we can find ourselves challenging in our own day-to-day -day lives. Although we might not relate to the situations that these characters are facing, we can empathize and understand what they're giving up for themselves, to understand and to to live their own lives. But it goes a lot deeper with the young schoolgirl who finally learns the dark world of family divisions and divorce by running away from home, to the dying man who seeks to find the meaning in life. Hard choices do lead to the most drastic outcomes that can really change the course of your life, and seeing the outcome others face can further make you see how the world works. And one social link that is a risk to the player is a social link with Tanaka. Although in Tanaka's side story he doesn't necessarily sacrifice much, considering he is like super rich, the sacrifice sacrifice we as the player give up actually ends up causing more good than bad. In order to actually start this social link, you need to give Tanaka a grand total of 40,000 yen in 3 installments. Since money is typically pretty scarce in Persona 3, it's a very big amount to just give and get nothing in return, but it does open up the social link, and after your many interactions with this devious salesman, it ends off with him stating that he will be giving a large donation for charity. Now I know his motives are selfish, and he is only thinking about his own gain and image, but for the greater good, money is actually being sent to the right place. 
It's a very grey area of right and wrong, but that might be for another time. The risk the player has to do is constantly challenged in Persona 3. Where to spend your money, who to spend time with, or should you go save the world? Your life is very limited, and you only have so many choices within a day, but the game does not want you to stick to your comfort zone, as lots of social links require you to a certain level of charm, courage, or academics to progress or initiate them, meaning you have to step out and spend money or do activities that improve you, but at the chance that you might not fulfill the bonds you wish to make. It's this life balance that I think is a lot more prominent in P3R, managing to show the many different ways lives can cross one another. And lives crossing one another is clear in the Iwatodai dorm and the Seas Club. I haven't really mentioned the story thus far, as it's not the most essential part to what I've been talking about, but basically, the main plot point in P3R is there's something called the Dark Hour, an extra hour in a 24-hour day, which transforms people into coffins, and only a select few people are awake at this time, and I think these cognitive manifestations known as shadows, roam around creating havoc. You, the protagonist, are one of the select few people who are awake at this time, along with some of your classmates who later forms a team. And this team around the protagonist is called Seas. And man do these people have some serious problems. Each and every single member of Seas has some traumatic moment that broke them, and it really affects them. From dead parents, self-doubt, even imposter syndrome, characters don't get along well with one another at the start, which leads to some moments that make you feel super awkward, but it's real. If you put a group of people together who have a similar skill set, it doesn't guarantee that they'll get along with one another. They're all different, living lives that are different from each other, and as the game progresses, they grow to not just tolerate one another, but accept them. It's a beautiful way of showing the growth we can see in life as the many lives cross one another in a more positive manner than negative. That was a very long segment on the social links and interactions, and it's the longest section of this video. So, for a change of pace, let's talk about Tartarus. In the Dark Hour, one of the big mysteries is why the school changes into this massive tower called Tartarus, where tons of shadows are roaming around. Not only is it filled with enemies, but it's also procedurally generated, meaning that every time you re-enter Tartarus, the floors change. So, despite each block within Tartarus having the same amount of floors, the layout and enemies you encounter changes. Now, this could just be me overlooking what Tartarus actually means, but I think Tartarus, as a game decision, really reflects the core message of sacrifice as well. Tartarus is this massive dungeon, kind of like the Ocean King Temple of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, but better, but still worse than both the generated themed dungeons of Persona 4 Golden and the specifically designed palaces of Persona 5 Royal. I think Tartarus serves its purpose well. The way I view Tartarus is as this test, the journey. Many times when you want to improve or conquer your fears, you have to take the same path over and over again, but every time you just get that much further before you have to stop and try again later. And along your journey, you get to help others and help them find their way back to life, which is seen through the missing persons quest. Maybe these people suffering from apathy syndrome are just people who lost their spark in life, and as you challenge yourself in your own life, you get to help them to get back on course. And Tartarus also shows the importance of working with others as well. I know, many RPGs let you remove people from your party and make it a lot more challenging when you take on dozens of foes was all on your own, but I think that the theming here in Tartarus makes it just that much more important and relevant. You have your team who banter between one another, who all work together with their strengths and weaknesses to take down the hundreds of shadows as you climb up the floors. Tartarus, through all its flaws, shows its strongest strength through working together. I know there was a lot of persona mumbo jumbo that I was just saying, but that's how I view it. I might be wrong or completely looking too much into it, but I guess that's the beauty of media and how it can lead us to many different interpretations. Moving on, as for the main story, it brings up some important dilemmas at times regarding the power that the Seas team has in using persona. Will they still be the same after they save the world and lose their power? And why are they fighting for others despite not getting any recognition for their deeds? It's a common theme that is brought up in many stories how characters believe that they won't be the same if their main gimmick, if we can call it that, is taken away from them. But by posing this question and asking yourself who you truly are with or without this element is another way of sacrifice leading to self-discovery. Junpei, one of the bros, really goes through this. I won't go too deep into why and how he goes about venting this frustration, but his character arc is one of the moments that make you feel for a situation. And the latter question, fighting for something you may never get any recognition for, is also an important idea that is brought into question as it really asks you if you are doing this for the greater good or for your own selfish interests. The main antagonist of the game, who I will not name, but you'll understand when you play the game, ask this question directly. The answers aren't the same by all the members of Seas, and it shows again how a group of people working together for the same thing aren't all doing this for the same reasons, but for something that they deem right. So, in a way, the whole Tanaka social link arc is basically just a microcosm for the entire Persona 3 story. I 
know that I've been yapping for a while now, and I'm not sure how else to end this. Persona 3 really connected with me. Its strong themes of risk is something that I relate to. Although many times in my own life, sometimes I feel like that I've been staying too close to what is deemed my normal comfort zone. Looking back, I've taken a lot of risks to live the life that I want to live, and I think that a lot of other people can also relate to this. People have either already taken that risk to find out more about themselves, or are unsure whether to take that next opportunity to live. Although some can view this as motivation, I think Persona 3 shows a lot more than that in actions. Motivation only means so much if you never act on it, because it's your actions that bring you to where you want to go. This is also why I think the main theme of Reload, Full Moon, Full Life, perfectly encapsulates this message. With a bar from Lotus Juice saying, Carpe diem, no time to waste, followed by the final line sung by Azumi Takahashi, again I hope I pronounced them correctly, Venture Life, Burn Your Dread, Take Risks, and Live Life. You only got so much time to do in this life, so take that risk and find out what it means to live for yourself.